Hey everyone, I hope you guys are having a great day. Welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. Um, so someone messaged me on my Discord, and by the way, if you're new to my channel, there is a Discord channel that you can go to to kind of talk directly with me or other people who are subscribed. There's not that many people on it, but I'm trying to grow it, so be sure to go and check it out and join the room. Alright, so for this video, someone on that Discord messaged me and said, Hey, I'm about to go into an interview. Do you have any advice for me? And I gave him a couple of tips and tricks of like what he can do, because I think the interview is going to be like a code challenge interview. And he basically said that this is one of the problems that they asked him. So if you know anything about hacker rank, you can go here and you can actually practice um, your programming algorithm skills. Uh, let me go to practice. That was like the ad page. Let me go to this one. So if you sign up, they have a bunch of different programming problems that you can kind of practice with. So if you go here, click algorithms, there's a ton of different, so they have a ton of different programming problems here with like challenging your abilities with algorithms. And if you're new to programming, I definitely recommend that you try some of these, at least the easy and medium ones. I'm not sure about the hard ones. Some of those you really need to know like intricate um, algorithms to be able to solve them. So I think the medium and easy are probably good, good ones to focus on if you're a beginner. All right, so back to the point of this video, he said that during the interview, they asked him to try to solve this problem. So I wanted to kind of just give you an overview about this and kind of show you my solution that I had to work up just because I like to challenge myself and this one seemed like it was pretty interesting. So the gist of this challenge, I'm not going to read through all this stuff, but the gist is you are a player in a breakout room and there are panels all over the walls connected to the doors. And each panel has seven characters and your job in this challenge is to try to figure out which words can potentially be used in these panels. So okay, some key takeaways is that you can click as many letters as you want. So I could click like a P P L E for Apple. Um, and you're guaranteed that the word is no more than seven characters, but no less than five. So that kind of helps you out along the way. <clears throat> and then the second key piece of information is that the, the keypad, if it starts with an A, then you know that the possible solution has to contain an A in it. Okay. So in this case, this keypad apple would pass but like i don't know elf wouldn't or i don't know what other words i can make up with this but i think you hopefully you get the point if it starts with an a if the keypad's first character is an a that means the word has to contain an a so that's basically the information they give you but with a ton of verbose <laughs> this is a verbose problem they there's a ton of text that you have to read and kind of parse through to understand but at the end of the day it's pretty simple they give you a an array of words and they give you an array of keypads and what you need to do is for every keypad that you have, you need to print out how many potential words you can type into that keypad. So the solution, in my opinion, so the solution that I came up with was you basically need to loop over every keypad. And then for each keypad, you're going to create a map of potential characters. So in this case, you would have a, a map object in JavaScript where you have A is true, B is false, C is false, D is false, E is true. And this lookup map just helps you do faster computations to know if your word contains that letter or not. So that's what I'm doing right here. I map over the keypads and then I basically set up a map with um, true values for every character that you find in the keypad. And then secondly, we're also keeping track of that first character. So if you remember in the problem statement, if you start with an A, your word has to contain an A in it. So that's really important to also keep track of. And what I basically do is I start looping through um, all the words and I sum up the ones that I can use all the characters on. So for example, if the first word I loop through, um, is apple, I check, Hey, does apple include the keyword of a, if it does, then I move on to this for each. And then in the for each, I say, does apple basically contain all the characters that were existing in the keypad? And I'm doing a reduce here to basically sum up. And, and what ultimately this needs to do is you need to end up summing up five characters found. So if the word is apple, you need to say, does A exist in this keypad? Does P exist in this keypad? Does L exist in this keypad? And does E exist in this keypad? And then also another P in there because there's two P's in apple. But ultimately, once you do a reduce over the word, for example, apple, you should get five found characters. And I just need to check if the number of found characters matches the length of the word, then we know that we can actually make up a real word using that keypad. So I kind of increment a sum here. And then after going through all the words, I just return the total sum. Some keypads might not be able to create any words. So for example, the first one, there's no P here. So you can't make apple or please. And the sum is actually zero for that one. 
Um, for this one, this one's interesting. You can make apple A-P-P-L-E, but since the first key character is S, then apple is kind of crossed off the list, right? Because again, the rules say that the word has to contain the first character of your keypad. In this case, apple has no S, so you kind of cross that one out. And that is why the sum of this one is two. So I thought this was a fun little challenge to kind of try out in, I don't know if they, uh, the person who messaged me on Discord cares or not about a solution. I hope he actually tried to figure out a solution himself after the interview, um, because that's something if you didn't do well in the interview, you should kind of take time to figure out what you can do. And that would just bother me if I failed an interview or I didn't do well in an interview and I didn't know how to figure out the solution to this. But yeah, I don't know if he, he did good or bad on this challenge in particular, but I want to go ahead and try it out and hopefully other people can kind of learn from it. So if you're interested in trying to do this yourself, I'll put this link in the actual description. I don't know how long, I don't know what check.com is, but I don't know how long this is going to last. But yeah, I think it's always good to practice your algorithm solving skills, not only if you're trying to find a job, but just in general, like when you're doing like web development, you end up doing a lot of stuff that's not like, doesn't really push the boundaries in terms of your like problem solving skills, right? You might be making a web page, you might need to figure out how to style a div, position div, center stuff, change the color of some text. Maybe you have some backend endpoints that need to persist data to a database, fetch data back, do something simple. But most day-to-day -day jobs don't do anything complex like this. Like this is, <laughs> I would be surprised if I had um, any stories that I need to work on or any features that I need to add to a system where I have to do some type of complex logic like this. And because of that, I always recommend that you just, every once in a while, just try these practice problems just to kind of keep your mind sharp and to make sure that you can solve really basic problems like this. Um, I, I, I also just find them fun. A lot of people hate whiteboarding interviews and I, I'm going to have a talk about that because I think I think they're a good way to test someone's skill, honestly. Like if, so this problem in general, I mean like, I would say this is like an easy, easy to a medium problem. Um, and if I had a potential person I'm interviewing and they couldn't make much progress with this, then I would probably be like, hey, you should probably practice problem solving a little bit because I'll be honest, I sat here for maybe 10 minutes just thinking about it. And I don't know how long these people are given during the interview to like try to solve these problems, but it took me some time to actually figure out like, okay, what is the solution? Work it out on a paper, maybe convince myself that this solution will work and then just try to implement it and then see that my solution works for this particular uh, use case. So if you guys are interested in me kind of solving more of these like practice algorithm problems, I could do that for you all. I'm not sure how, how important or how eager you all are to learn that type of stuff. And plus there's a lot of other YouTubers who kind of do that already. So I might just do one once in a while and just show like my my solutions like I did. But yeah, there's a lot and most of these are probably pretty easy or some of them are easy, some of them are hard. Cool. Yeah, so let me know what your thoughts are. Leave me a comment below. Uh, give me a thumbs up because it really helps my channel in video become popular and grow. And then finally, if you're new to this channel, be sure to click that subscribe button because I'm going to have a lot of random videos like this related to web development and programming in the future, which you definitely want to see. Okay, thank you guys so much and happy coding. Have a good day.